Hey guys, Brendan from TAT. Um, today, I want to use the GTC 505 and we're going to do some ignition testing. Okay, so we've got a Holden Astra that's come in. Misfire, we all know what it's probably going to be, right? So before we go to the ignition system and even pull anything off, I want to show you a nice, quick, easy way that even someone without a scope can do scope-like work um, using this GTC 505. So it's something I picked up because it was reviewed in the equipment review section, which um, we've got on the TAP website. So if you're thinking about buying any products, you can go in there, see um, if it's worth getting. And a lot of the time I'll just go in there and I'll browse for new stuff and see, you know, if there's something that someone's come across and um, maybe I can add it to my arsenal and it can help me out. This thing has been an absolute ripper. Okay, so our 1.8 Astra's running. It's got a dead misfire, right? Now, we haven't pulled anything off except for the, the plastic cover, obviously. And first thing I'm going to go grab is this GTC 505. We turn her on. Boots up to wherever I last saved it. But if we go through these modes, you'll see I can do burn time, ramp time, which is like putting a current clamp on a, a coil, or voltage, which is your, your voltage required to create um, the spark. And uh, tachometer, obviously, you, you, you know what that's going to do, but it's not that helpful, I find. So anyone who's done no scope stuff, you, you don't need to, that's the idea of this. But I keep it in this um, carry case, and you'll see this is a, um, you know, a waveform, and so I give the guys a bit of an idea of what they're looking at. So first, I mean, if we look at this voltage, the KV build-up, that's what we had down here where we boot up. So I'm on voltage, and we're just using an inductive pickup that's on the end of the tool. Sorry if it's not all in view, there you go. And I'm going to try and do this with one hand, so let me get rid of that. If I keep that up and I get my little antenna down here, you'll see we now have a waveform. So anyone who's done absolutely nothing with scopes, you may not know what you're looking at, but it's I can tell you I've tried this against the scope and it comes up pretty well. So we can see there, that's what we're, we're getting as far as a, um, a KV reading, just that little line. Now you may not like that, you can see I go to another one, so you may change the view. So in this case, instead of the waveform, maybe we'll go to digital. And it's just going to measure it for us now. So it's a, it's a number. There we go. Somewhere around, call it the, the 9 kV. You're always going to get spikes. It's an inductive pickup, you know. It's always going to be difficult. That's not really the tool's fault. Go to this one. We're getting somewhere around, say, the 7 or so. And we're, at this point, really, we're just looking for evenness. Go to this next one. You can see definitely higher, you know. So I'm averaging um, closer to up around the, the what, 11 or 10. We go to the fourth, and I'd say we're back down to oh, it's jumping around a bit, but we're back down close to around that seven or so that we had around on that first one, right? So straight away, I'm thinking there's probably a number with cylinder two, um, and just to to I don't know expand a bit. So the fact that it's jumping up a bit higher um, that indicates to me that we're we're having to use a lot more energy to try and jump this gap, right? So straight away, I'm thinking. Uh, possibly we've got a um, resistance in the secondary. We've got a big plug gap. You know, maybe we've got a break in the the secondary of the coil, and it's having to jump that before it jumps the cylinder. So we take a bit of a bit of that information. Uh, let's go ramp time. So this is just the same as to go to the waveform. This is like if you were to put a current clamp around a coil. Let me get it so it's viewable. So we've got our current um, ramp there on that one. Again, we're going through, we're looking if they seem similar. So we have a current ramp on all of them. I mean, to me, there was a difference, I would say, on number four, right? You'll see how there's a little bit more of a, a slope, but a lot of that also comes down to where you're getting it. You'll see how there's a difference here. Really, all I'm using this for at this point is to say, yes, I definitely do have a trigger to all of these. So we've, we've quickly ruled out, you know, and by the fact that our amperage reading ends up at about a similar rate. We can go to, um, sorry, if I keep it on ramp time, and if we go to digital, we could keep it on there and we can see if we're getting a similar reading. So it's 2.5 milliseconds or so of ramp time. Let it sort itself out, and again around 2.5. Upsetting it a bit, getting into some different spots. Slightly lower, I'd say, 2.2. And about the 2.5. So, I mean, again, that, that's lower, but I'm not really using that. I'd go get an amp clamp if I wanted to do some 
you know, actual diagnostics using the, the waveform itself if I was really concerned with that. But we know we're getting a trigger, we know we're getting power and ground, and we don't have a massive difference between them, so I'm not even right there. Just quickly, I've, I've, always, I've already looked at you know, things like, do I have a poor ground at the ECU for the transistor? Well, it's ruled out because I'm making the amperage, right? So we'll now go to the last one that I usually use being burn time. In this case, we can look at the waveform, which has some merit, you know, because we do want to see, is this trending upwards, downwards? Is there turbulence there as there should be if the spark's actually happening in cylinder? Or we can go to view again, and it's just going to measure the, sorry, I wanted to get to digital. Now it's giving us our burn time here in milliseconds, and that is measuring this this horizontal line. That's your burn time, right? So you don't need to know anything about reading a scope to be able to read a number and say, are they all similar? So number four, we've got a burn time of about 1.8 milliseconds at this point. Move along, fairly similar, 1.6, 1.8. Get to number two. A little bit higher, if anything. Um, things kind of smoothed out a little at this point, and there we go. She's she's jumping around a bit, and that's that jumping's actually happening while the misses are happening. So it's kind of this isn't a dead miss at this point. You know, it's it's missing erratically, I would say. And lastly, on number one, around about that 1.6, 1.7. Then I think we were consistently getting around on these ones, 1.7. Whereas this guy again seems to be having a little bit of an erratic time. Currently not missing. It'd be nice if I had a little indicator to tell you when it is or not, but definitely something going on there. I'm gonna go back to waveform. I'm gonna get this nicer for you. So we'll see if we can capture anything from the waveform. All right, so we're just looking at the pattern. We're not we're not reading too much into it at the moment. We're looking at it. Pick up the right spot, there we go. So we've got cylinder three. Cylinder two. And cylinder one. Now at this point, with this not actively misfiring, this is where I would give it a snap throttle, right? And I would maybe go get someone so they could help me do a snap throttle, but you can see, I, I, I don't know if you can hear this missing, but every time it does, you can see that burn time get dramatically lower on this one and you can see it jumping around all the time anyway right so if I go to a different cylinder now this thing's still giving intermittent misses you might be able to see it hear it not jumping around not jumping this guy our suspect at this point you can see it really moving around and to me it's almost like there's not much turbulence right I, I kind of want to see the, the turbulence that you're seeing on these other ones. So what I mean by that is how smooth this gets sometimes. Or as you go to these ones, and all this all this hash, all this haggardness, it's it's kind of good because it shows that a spark is occurring in cylinder. If I had to take a wild guess, you know, considering that this amperage wise wasn't too bad, most of the time burn wise it's not bad and then every now and then it just goes and, and it gets very clean and, and short burn time. Um, to be honest, I think we might be looking at some kind of external to cylinder um, spark event. So we'll pull the coil out, we'll have a look at what we've got. Okay, so we've got our coil out. First we're just going to have a visual, so um, we'll have a look around, looking okay. Not too bad. Uh, bingo. So that's all we needed. So pulling up that, that little sheath in there, which I may not have moved and may not have seen it, but we can see it's definitely um, burnt through this coil. So every, there's, there's very likely going to be high secondary resistance on the plugs. And I'll, I'll obviously check them and see if they're um, uh, terribly worn out. Um, and then because it's been so difficult to jump that secondary, it's found a, another secondary path through the insulation of the coil here. And that is a, that is a bad one. That's, that's terribly burnt and obviously jumping out to the side of the head. Okay guys, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, I want to reiterate that this is not a paid um, 
sponsorship or anything. This is a tool that I got just from looking through the equipment reviews on TAT. So make sure you're heading into there, using all the, the sections of the website, checking out those equipment reviews. Um, just in case anyone asks in the comments section, where did I get this? I don't believe there's any Australian resellers. So mine was through Amazon, which buys it directly through the General Technologies Corporation. Um, I, that was just their online store that was easiest to use. So worth having a check out. Um, if you, um, I'm sure there's a better way to show how the tool works, but you know, it's it's something that I've only recently picked up and I've, buttonology is quite good. I can make my way around quite well. But the other guys in the shop here who don't use the scope really at all, um, they're, they're definitely starting to get the hang of it. If I was going to do some snap throttle stuff, sure, I'd probably grab the scope and I'd grab a, an ignition wand or something so I can capture it and um, review the data. This, sure, it has some functionali functionalities like that, but not to the extent of an actual scope. And um, like I said, I've made it a bit easier for the guys by just putting on that little um, you know, tip, t hints and tips trick basically about hints and, hints and, and tips section about how a waveform should look and it makes it quite easy to get this and you know using the waveform and the digital um, nice little ignition tool so I hope that helps guys see ya